The Heart of Art is sponsored in part by the Texas A&M University Art Galleries, which includes the Stark and Forsyth Galleries located inside the MSC. The galleries provide a variety of opportunities to experience art exhibitions, events, and hands-on activities. More information at uart.tamu.edu. The Heart of Art is brought to you by the Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts at Texas A&M University, bringing innovative and culturally diverse visual and performing arts programming to Texas A&M University and the Brazos Valley. The Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts fosters the creativity of our community via the transformative power of the arts. The Heart of Art, scoping the Brussels Valley for the best artists and bringing them to your radio. Howdy Aguilar and welcome back to the KMU Studios. My name is Hector Nino and you're listening to The Heart of Art. Today in the studio we have a very special guest. She is a harbinger of the arts in the Bryan College Station area. She's the executive director of the Opus which brings professional productions of theater, music, and dance performances to our area. Her name is Anne Black, and we have a great conversation about how Opus came about, how it has evolved, and what their current season has in store. So make sure to stay tuned for that. But before that, I would like to uh, go into my art announcements. And for today's art announcements, I thought I would share with you an artist that's been on my radar recently. Uh, and his name is Ben Ashton, who is a British artist. And he puts a twist on the Regency era paintings, which... Um, were popular uh, around the rise of the British Empire, and there was a really big emphasis on perfect portraiture. Um, and he juxtaposes this with uh, some modern techniques, and these include um, like distorting the image to look stretched out, so everything else will be exactly like a Regency era painting, but a portion of it will be stretched out to make it look a certain way. It, it's really cool. It looks like breaking the matrix even. Uh, so it's a very, a very interesting um, juxtaposing styles. And um, and another technique, a technique that he uses is he'll mimic that same perfect portraiture, but have a portion of it look unfinished. And yeah, and he says that he wants to mirror the pomposity of contemporary discourse and just make fun of it. Um, so yeah, I, I think this was a really interesting find if y'all want to check out his work. His Instagram is Ben Ashton Art. That's at Ben Ashton Art uh, if you'd like to check out his work. All right, let's get back to that interview with Anne Black. We have Anne Black here today. So, hi, Anne. How are you today? Hi, Hector. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm so excited for a conversation. You know, I was talking to people that I was going to be interviewing you, and they said, oh, you're going to have a lot of content to talk about. So, <laughs> I, I'm, I can't wait to get to it. If I can remember it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I'm sure you will. I mean, it is the 51st season of Opus, correct? That's correct. Right. And you've been with the organization for 39 years now. You're on your 40th year. That's right. Wow. So, thank you so much for your contribution to to. Texas A&M. Um, but I did want to go through your background first sure. um, and see where your love for art grew. So I was going to ask, where are you from? And was your love for art fostered there? I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. Okay. And yes, uh, as a child, I was involved in Casa Manana's merry-go-round theater in the summer. Oh. I think that's probably where I was bitten by the bug. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to the University of Texas at Arlington and studied theater there. All right. And, you know, here I am. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And we're glad to have you. <laughs> um, so how did you end up in College Station? What, what was that uh, like? Well, we really, we moved here for my husband's job. Mm. Uh, so that's how we ended up here. And then about two weeks after we came, I, I had a call from a friend who lived here to say, there's a position open. Uh, that we think you'd really, really be good for. And I really was not planning to go back to work right away because our daughters were, we had a, a junior in high school and a sixth grader, and we wanted to get them settled in, but I couldn't pass it up. 
Mm-hmm. You just had to. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm glad you did. <laughs> so, yeah, you were present in the early days of Opus, right? Um, how long had it been active when you joined? Well, I came in season 12. Okay, season 12. All so right. not very long. <laughs> oh, all right. So how was the idea of Opus conceived? What needs did Opus want to meet here in the Brazos Valley? Well, I, I think in the early days, uh, Opus was born in the 72, 73 time period when the rudder facilities were being built. Wow. And it was long a dream of... Uh, Earl Rudder and Jay Wayne Stark, who was the director of the Memorial Student Center at that time, uh, that those facilities be used to bring world-class performing arts to the students at Texas Mm -hmm. A&M. In those days, students came to Texas A&M, many, probably most of whom, had never been outside Texas to see a ballet or an opera or a Broadway show. Uh, so that, that was really the, the idea that the two of them had. Um, and the facilities were finished, and Opus was born and brought Van Cliburn as the first uh, artist on the big stage uh, wow. in Rudder. Yeah, that's yeah. a big name for their first yes. <laughs> season, yes. right? Of course, he was right down the road. He lived in Fort Worth. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Good to know. You're right, that's right. Awesome. I mean, Opus has now grown, I think, into one of the major pillars in our community, especially in the arts, um, bringing the world's best performers. What do you attribute this success to? Well, I think growth has been a big part of it Mm -hmm. as Bryan College Station has grown and the university has grown. And if if you think about where we are in the state, we're 100 miles from any major arts programs. Right. Um, Houston, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, all those are 100 miles away at least. So we draw really from the whole region. Hmm. Um, and we've been surprised about that and particularly I think what we refer to as the Northwest Corridor uh, be- between here and Houston, the woodlands in that area. We have a lot of seasoned subscribers who live in the woodlands. Wow. It's easier to get here than it is to get downtown Houston. I can imagine. Uh, so, yeah, I think I think the growth of the community and the growth of the university has allowed us to really expand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there definitely was like a, an empty window in the arts in this area. And I think Opus was at the right time, at the right place to bring in those performers. Well, I think we had some real visionaries here yeah. um, who maybe had moved here from larger cities and wanted all of this. Really, Opus and the Brazos Valley Symphony and the Arts Council of the Brazos Valley were all formed within just a few years of each other. Uh, And I think that's attributed to people like Ann Wyatt, who moved here from Washington, (laughs) D.C., and said, wow, we need some stuff here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it really, you know, we, we stand on the shoulders of a very visionary, forward-thinking people. Mm-hmm. And I know the name Opus stands for Opera and Performing Arts Society. Um, was it op- primarily opera at the, at the beginning? No, but it was primarily classical. Okay. So it was opera, orchestras, ballets, classical artists. And over the years, and and I say over the 40 years I've been here, uh, classical music, grateful to have K.A. and U. because we can still have some. Oh, yeah. (laughs) But in terms of being able to sell it, we've not been able to. And because the symphony has been so successful, we never really wanted to compete with them. So we really kind of backed off, and there were a lot of requests for Broadway and more popular concert kinds of things. Uh, so we started serving different audiences. And now you can go to a chamber music program or a full orchestra program or a Broadway show. It's all here. I mean, yeah, I think one of the main reasons uh, for your success is also your targeting of all kinds of audiences. Uh, I, I saw that you have three different series within the season. Can you explain what those are? Sure. Our main stage series uh, primarily consists of two night larger programs like Broadway shows, major music kinds of things. 
our intimate gathering series we do in the smaller venue in Rudder Theater, uh, and it's meant to do smaller, and that's where we do some classical uh, guitar and uh, some small theater pieces and things that really need a smaller setting, uh, and the audience is just right there. It's, it's really great. And then a few years ago, we started a series called Singular Sensations. Uh, we had a lot of feedback from people that wanted concerts. They wanted music, but we knew we couldn't sell two nights of that. <laughs> so we started this series, and really that is where we see a lot of people we don't see any other time. Uh, that are coming to those kinds of things. We had a, a John Denver tribute a couple of years ago that was a packed house for one night. Um, so that has filled that gap. We also serve about 17,000 public school children every year. We bring uh, one hour long uh, school performances and oh. bus them in from the schools to see live performance. Oh, awesome. So they also get to get their experience in there as well. That's right. Awesome. And um, I mean, out of all the performances that you've brought here to the area, what do you think has been the one that has impacted your life the most? Or do you have like a favorite group of people? Oh, well, I don't have a favorite. I have <laughs> many favorites. Oh, yeah. Um, I think in terms of impacting me personally, mm -hmm. uh, in 1989, we were able to do a world premiere of a new ballet company out of Russia, oh, wow. and that was before the uh, before the Soviet Union fell, mm -hmm. uh, and the Bolshoi Ballet brought a new company of much younger dancers to do a production of the Nutcracker, and we got the world premiere, wow. uh, and that impacted the whole city. We have a great s scrapbook, you'll, Hector. You'll have to come over to the office sometime. I with, would love to. <laughs> it it was like the whole city was just alive with getting ready. Uh, there were letters to the editor about we have to make College Station beautiful for the Russians, and mm. uh, and it was just a magic time. In addition to being holiday time, which is already magic, but right. um, that that was a big impact because we had to put that together in about six weeks. Oh, wow. uh, they had visited. He wanted uh, Yuri Grigorovich, who was the artistic director, wanted to give this company, uh, uh, he wanted them to be surrounded by young people. So they visited a number of college campuses to decide where to do it. In mm -hmm. the dead of summer, it was July, and, it, <laughs> and they came here and our students greeted them and toured them around the hall and, and he just loved the environment and they gave us that world premiere. Wow. So, <laughs> That was exciting, and, yeah. and I can't match that with anything else. Particular performers, having Tony Bennett here in the very last year he toured was big. Uh, we, you know, we had Jerry Seinfeld. Wow. Uh, we've had Yo-Yo Ma, and he's coming back again this year. Right. Uh, so those are some of the big programs that we landed that we're the most proud of. I mean, yeah, world-renowned, again, um, I mean, the arts here at Texas A&M have been growing a lot lately. Um, do you think that the inception of the School of Performance, Visualization, and Fine Arts will impact Opus in any way? Or do you think Opus has impacted the school? I think we all impact each other. I mm -hmm. think, you know, for many years there has been discussion about the amalgamation of the arts, bringing them all together, because we've been scattered all over campus. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had kinesiology, had the dance program, and... And, you know, I mean, the theater was here and architecture was there. Right. Now getting, uh, getting all of those things and the synergy that that uh, allows, uh, I think is big. I think all of us benefit from that. Right, yeah. I mean, so much more working together across disciplines as well. Exactly. Right. Um, I mean, anything can happen in live performances, Um do you have any like funny stories to share with our audience of a mishap of, of some sort? Well, there have been a lot of those. <laughs> well, one of the quick one of the things that quickly comes to mind, and I don't think the audience ever knew, uh, we had a Broadway show called The Play That Goes Wrong. Oh. And the whole purpose, the whole point of the play is it's a comedy and these people are doing all these things 
and one thing after another goes wrong during the course of the show and it's fall down funny and on the second night uh, one of the things that happens in the second act is the set falls and the set fell but it fell at a time it wasn't supposed to could have really injured somebody oh yeah uh that but everybody thought it was just part of it. it <laughs> so, you know, those of us that knew it was not time for that to happen were holding our breath, and fortunately nobody was standing where it fell on them. Oh, that's good. Uh, but yes, and that's part of the great thing about live performances. It's never the same way twice. Right, yeah, you're at the edge of your seat that's the right. whole time. That's right, you can't hit rewind. Nope. Um, it's <laughs> You I'm either like this see show. it or you don't. That's right. <laughs> yeah. This is pre-recorded. Unlike you. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, I mean, so now you're in your 51st season. Congratulations for that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what the season will bring to the Brazos Valley? We have a great, great season. We open with Mean Girls uh, the first week of November, and that has really, really sold well. I think the students are particularly excited about that one, oh, followed yeah. by Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> and then uh, the first week of December, we have Cirque Dreams Holidays. It's a big Cirque show uh, modeled oh. after Christmas. All right. Um, and then into the spring, we have To Kill a Mockingbird, uh, oh. Come From Away, which is the story of that a lot of people don't know about what happened on September 11th with 38 planes that were sent to actually (laughs) British Columbia uh, and were there for days and days and days taken in by local folks uh, because they couldn't get home. Uh, It's a it's a great great story. We have Little Women as well Mm. so it's you know and Yo-Yo Ma is coming in March. Okay it's a packed season definitely. It is. (laughs) I mean, and that's just the main stage. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys, we will be going on a quick break, but do not go anywhere. We will be right back. The Heart of Art is brought to you by the Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts at Texas A&M University, bringing innovative and culturally diverse visual and performing arts programming to Texas A&M University and the Brazos Valley. The Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts fosters the creativity of our community via the transformative power of the arts. And, I mean, if people want to find out about those other performances that are not going to be on the main stage, is there a website that they can access? We have a great website, and you can look at videos of all of those things. Great. Uh, opustickets.org. Okay, opustickets.org. Um, and where do you see Opus going in the future? What do you see in store for it? Well, um, it's going to be hard for us to get much bigger. We, right. You know, we already have the venue lots and lots of nights during the year and it's a shared venue so uh you know i think we're doing as much as we can do it's just to continue with the quality and Mm -hmm. continue to to try and bring people what they want Mm -hmm. Uh, we serve a very broad audience both in uh, age ethnicity uh, ways of life uh, religion so uh finding those things that this group of people over here really, really want, even though this group of people over here don't, uh, and finding that balance uh, right. is part of the challenge and part of the reward. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I was wondering, how do you keep that quality of performances? Because I don't think, I mean, the College Station area is known as such a performing arts center. Um, I think it's grown to be that. But how, what is your your deciding process of who's going to be on your stage? Well, we have a program committee made up of board members and students. Um, I'm primarily the conduit between us and the industry. I work really hard with the agents and producers uh, to find out what's going to be available, uh, and then we go from there. The really hard part is not finding the artists but finding the calendar for everything Mm -hmm. because we open the university calendar and we automatically it's seven months not 12. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you take out all of the things summer we can't 
program really in the summer. We we lucked out with Come From Away when we had to move it. It's the one week that the new student conferences are not going to be in those facilities. Oh, wow. Um, but for the most part, those facilities are busy in the summer. Um, and so when you take out the summer and you take out spring break and you take out Thanksgiving week and you take out every football weekend, uh, right. there's not a lot left. Nope. Uh, so <laughs> It's all down to scheduling. So then it, then it really gets to the, the great puzzle that we mm-hmm. put together right. every year. And do you usually, I mean, see who's going to be going to the nearby metropolitan areas like Houston, Austin, or do they come no, specifically for the College Station we area? we go after what we want. Right. And most of the time, what we want is also what some other venues, not necessarily even Houston and Austin, but mm-hmm. maybe Galveston and Tyler mm-hmm. uh, and Orange and some of those cities. The right. major cities, Austin and Houston, and Dallas are doing week-long engagements for the most part. Mm -hmm. So we're doing the second tier after they've done their full weeks, then they take out, take the programs out on a smaller scale. Okay. And and so that's when we start booking them. And can people, how do people become involved with the Opus? Is is there volunteer opportunities? We have a volunteer corps. Of course, we have a student committee of Mm -hmm. about 60 students who work performance nights and wow. do all the on-campus promotion and those things. It's a big group. It is. Uh, we also have a volunteer corps that's made up of community volunteers uh, who also work performance nights and, and help with those kinds of things. And that's all that information is on our website. And okay. we would certainly invite you uh, if you're interested in volunteering. Hey, it's an opportunity to see the shows. Right. <laughs> uh, and, and have some fun and enjoyment with your colle- with colleagues that are, are enjoying the same kinds of things. Right, that with the same interests. Right. What is something about art that you would like our audience to know? Art isn't easy. Mm-hmm. Art is, I, I think, the cultural constant. We've had it since the cavemen were drawing on the walls oh, yeah. uh, music was very much a part of of early life in this world and we have to preserve it mm-hmm. we have to support it and preserve it for the next generation to enjoy definitely wow Anne black thank you so much <laughs> for stopping by and talking to us about your experience with opus um good luck on this 51st season thanks hector i hope to see you there of course you definitely will <laughs> Alrighty, and now I'd like to finish off the show, um, you know, in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, I'd like to end it with uh, a couple of performances by Mariachi Sanchez, who are a local mariachi group that is available for performances. And this first song that they perform will be A Mi Manera, as performed by Vicente Fernandez in 1972. This is Mariachi Sanchez. cerca ya lo esperaré serenamente ya ves yo he sido así te lo diré sinceramente viví la inmensidad no sé si más otro cualquiera jugué sin descansar a mi manera jamás viví un amor que para mí fuera importante corté Mejor 
de cada instante viajé y disfruté no sé si más que otro cualquiera tal vez todo esto fue a mi manera tal vez lloré o tal vez reí tal vez gané o tal vez perdí ahora sé que fui feliz que si lloré también amé All right, now we will be listening to El Mariachi Loco, as performed by Mariachi Vargas in 1971. And this is Mariachi Sanchez. I'm Hector Nino, and you've been listening to The Heart of Art, a production of 90.9 KAMU-FM. You can find all of our shows anytime at kamu.tamu.edu.
The Heart of Art is brought to you by the Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts at Texas A&M University, bringing innovative and culturally diverse visual and performing arts programming to Texas A&M University and the Brazos Valley. The Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts fosters the creativity of our community via the transformative power of the arts. The Heart of Art is sponsored in part by the Texas A&M University Art Galleries, which includes the Stark and Forsyth Galleries located inside the MSC. The galleries provide a variety of opportunities to experience art exhibitions, events, and hands-on activities. More information at uart.tamu.edu.